Good morning, survivors, and happy Friday. It's Angie. Are you ready to start your day? Seems like a good time to have a cup of coffee, shall we? <laughs> so yesterday I got an email from um, a, a reader, a viewer, who wanted to know, what if you don't want to leave the narcissist? How do you deal with that? Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Let's get started. First of all, you should understand that uh, narcissists don't change. Okay, so if you want to continue to live with one, then you have to be prepared to deal with the behavior and to accept their limitations. It does help you to understand what you're dealing with. And if you're not being physically abused and your narcissist is on the more mild side of the scale, then it's possible, um, but not recommended. With that being said, let's, let's talk about how you can do it. So what it comes down to is that if you're going to continue to live with a narcissist, you have to be able to do a few different things. The first thing that you have to do is, like I said, understand their behavior, but then you also have to be prepared to accept it. And you have to learn how to not allow it to become personal to you. So how do you deal with that kind of abuse and not take it personally is the question. All right, let's talk about it. Once you learn how to deal with it, um, you know, you can either decide to emotionally cope with it or in, in, in a, an ideal situation, you might choose to gather up the strength you need to leave. In either case, you can tolerate it better if you learn the great rock practice, okay? And essentially what the great rock practice is, is that when they do behave badly, you learn how to not give them any emotional reaction at all. Because when they do that, they want supply, okay? They want narcissistic supply. And so if typically when uh, your narcissist goes off on you and freaks out and rages at you, you cry, that's what they want you to do. So next time they do it, don't cry. Just gray rock, be serious, no emotion, okay? Um, if you can learn to not take the personal insults personally, <laughs> you can get through it. Um, you know, uh, the, the lady wrote me a really long letter about her situation, and I'm not going to read it here because um, I don't really think that it's necessarily a relevant thing, um, and also because I don't share personal information without permission. Okay, but um, what it all comes down to is the ability to resist feeling personally hurt by the narcissist is the very best thing you can do. Can you control a narcissist? Not really, but what you can do is you can, you know, I've talked about this before, there's like a two-step thing you can do that ethically can help you to control the narcissist up to a point. And that is the gray rock when they do the bad things, okay? And it's the idea of when they do something right. So like, excuse me, during the love bombing phase or during the phase of, you know, the hoovering phase, whatever, because every narcissistic relationship goes on a, like a three-tiered phase. phase. It starts with love bombing, and then you go to the devalue and the discard phases, and um, then it usually comes back around um, repeatedly over and over again. So the best way that you can deal with it is to, when they're in the love bombing phase, when they're good, the good part of the relationship, you know, lots of praise, lots of um, positive feedback, positive behavior, and then when they go into the negative parts of the cycle, you don't give them any attention and you don't give them any feedback of any nature um, if you can avoid it. And, and that's only going to work if you're not being physically abused, of course, and it's going to be difficult. It's never going to be easy. So if you want to continue to live with the narcissist, the best thing you can do is manage your own emotions in regard to the narcissist and learn how to be completely emotionally self-sufficient. It's a process. And the thing that throws you off about the narcissist is that, of course, like I said, with the cycle, at the beginning of the relationship, it seems like a normal, healthy relationship and maybe even better than a normal, healthy relationship because suddenly it seems like you've met your soulmate. You've got this person who likes all the same things you like and maybe, you know, or if they don't like the same things you like, they're interested in what you're interested in and they want to talk to you about everything and hear your, hear your thoughts and, and tell you all their thoughts. And it seems so real and so legit. You might talk for hours on the phone or you might sit and have, you know, all night conversations that are amazing and epic and wonderful. But then, you know, once they realize they've got you hooked and they start to get bored with all of that, uh, you know, they go back into the usual and they start finding things wrong with you. And yeah, you should watch that. Um, I did a video a while back, like a long time ago called uh, something about Ned the narcissist and the tricycle or something. Um, and it's, it's really like that um, where, you know, you're at first you're a shiny new object and it's exciting and pretty and, fun and awesome and then as the time passes you know the shine you look a little less shiny and you seem a little less awesome to them and that's when they start the devalue phase so if you know this going in if you're already in the situation I'm sure you've experienced it already um, 
you know, the, the best the best advice I can give you if you if you don't want to leave, if you truly don't want to leave, is to find happiness within sight within yourself. Learn to make yourself happy. Learn to put yourself in a position of being the one who um, is responsible for your own happiness. And then learn to be happy regardless of who's around you and what kind of negativity you're dealing with. It is a very difficult thing to do, but if you if you want to be happy and stay with that person, that's your option. You have to learn to be happy no matter what. Learn to be happy even if someone is standing over you screaming horrible things at you. Can you do that? If you can, you're golden. If you can't, then maybe you need to rethink that you don't want to leave. Um, do you want to spend your whole life being in a situation where you are substandard to someone? Do you not want to have someone who loves you for who you are? Do you not want to have someone who loves you as much as you love them? These are things to think about. Now, this particular person has children with her narcissist, and so I understand how much more difficult that makes it, and I understand that we would all prefer to just stay in our relationships and have everything be okay. But when you're dealing with a narcissist, it's not going to be okay. It's going to stay the same way, and the only person who will change is you. So if you're willing to change yourself enough to stay with that person, and you're willing to tolerate the abuse to stay with that person, then that's how you do it. You just learn how to cope with it, and you just learn how to manage it, and you don't expect any emotional support whatsoever, especially when you need it the most. So I don't mean to be so harsh about it. I don't mean to be so negative about it, um, but it's a fact. Narcissists don't change. So that, my friend, is my advice. I hope it's helpful to you. Um, and if you'd like me to expand more on how to tolerate living with a narcissist, I'll be happy to do that. I've done other videos that are similar, and I'll try to link out to those in these, this video today. All right? All right. I'm going to go ahead and wrap up for today. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them below. Otherwise, I'll see you later today for another video. Have a wonderful day, and thanks so much for being part of my life and part of my day. And, hey, thanks for letting me be a part of yours. It really does mean so much to me. See you soon.